Hello, and welcome back to the Expanded Universe, or, uh, as Disney redubbed it, Legends. So, we have officially, um, gotten, um, past before episode four. Everything from here on forward is either during, not during, but is either in the same year as episode four, or after. So, this book specifically takes place, um, 0 ADY, which means it takes place in the very year. I, I, they don't say a specific time, but I believe it's about two months after the events of A New Hope. And this is Star Wars Allegiance by Timothy Zahn. Um, now remember, I'm going through these for the first time, uh, but I'm no ignorant fool. I know that he is the creator of arguably one of the greatest contributions to the entire EU, which a lot of people for the longest time considered as actual episodes 7, 8, and 9, which is the Thrawn trilogy. Um, but here with Legions, we get to focus on a character who is apparently going to be a big part of Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy. Now, for people that would read this backwards, because this publication order-wise, Allegiance came out after um, the Thrawn trilogy, but does chronologically take place before them. So, I have no prior knowledge of Mara Jade. I know stuff about the Expanded Universe. I know that she will eventually marry Luke. I know that she was the Emperor's Hand. But I don't know anything about her from the Thrawn trilogy. Um... We do have Luke and Han in this. They have very small, minor roles, as they should, this book. I mean, I would have preferred them not to be in it at all. But at the very least, they are a rather minor part of this book. In fact, I'd still even argue they have, for the minor role that they have, they still have too much. Along with Leia and her old subplot. Which, I did watch Matt Wilkins review before making this review. Because um, I wanted to see what he thought of it. And, um, he go, he, he's going through the entire EU right now. Like, currently he just finished the, uh, the Jedi Academy trilogy. Um, like, as of today, when this is uploaded. But, um, he also does all the comics and short stories and everything. Like, he has everything to do with the Expanded Universe. And I don't have all that money. I don't have all that time. And I'm, and I'm not gonna go through all the comic books and stuff, but but apparently it is a very, this period of time, like, in between episode 4 and 5 is apparently very crowded with material. There are a bunch of comic books, there's another young young adult book series that deal with the Rebels with Han, Luke, and Leia. Um, and, then, and then these books, and it's just, if you were to read all of that, it would feel very crowded. But as for me, my first run through the entire EU, of course, this will not be my only run because there are still more books to obtain from the past that I have not. I got interrupted again. Uh, I tried to edit it out, and it didn't work out too well. So we're just going to continue. But anyway, all I was saying is that this will not be my only time through the Expanded Universe. Um, in the future, there will be more reviews of stuff in the past, stuff I haven't done yet. Because um, it's very expansive, and I don't have all the money in the world. But eventually, I, I'm i not going to have everything that uh, uh, Matt Wilkins has. Because uh, he goes through, like, literally everything possible. I'm not going to do that. So, um, I will do stuff that I feel is worth my time. Because he even reviews stuff that's, you know, like, not worth his time. So, but, on to this book, Allegiance. It was a very mixed bag. Um, now, I know Timothy Zahn, Timothy Zahn is a phenomenal writer. Um, so I'm just going to chalk this down to this not being one of his best. Though, I've seen other reviews on it uh, before making this. Some people really are for it. And some people dislike it. Like, uh, Matt Wilkins. Me, I'm somewhere in the middle. Because as for overcrowded, I wouldn't know. Because this is my first time going with in between this period. And I only I only have allegiance and choices of one. 
before moving on to episode 5. So that's not really a concern for me. Apparently the whole plot with Leia has kind of already been done before. But again, I haven't seen it. So for me it was fine. Wasn't anything particularly super interesting. Wasn't something I was super invested in, but it was there. Um, like I said, they, they, they really didn't need to be here, like, at all. It could have just been, um, a, a book without them, but they're there. Um, the only thing I really gleaned from the Han and Leia stuff, to, or, sorry, from the Han, the Han, Luke, and Leia, like, subplots. Actually, Leia's, like, <clears throat> completely irrelevant. Um, not because she's not cool, just because it would, the entire main cast was kind of pointless this book. But anyway. I do love seeing more Han and Luke. It's good to see more of them. Because um, you got to remember, there was like a like a three-year gap in between episode four and five. So they had a lot of that time to become friends. What I do like about um, the whole story, though, with Han and Luke, because um, the, it's Han, Luke, and Chewbacca for a bit. But I feel like, and this is probably not the author's intention, but I just got done reading Rebel Dawn. So, sorry about that if you heard that. I get um, a bit of a, uh, I think his name was Jarek. Jarek Solo, the one who was pretending to be a Solo. I feel like he had that happen to him, Han. You know, he had that kid die. And then he had the love of his life, you know, die. You know, and then he meets Luke and Leia. And, um... In this book, I don't know, I kind of got a feeling like... But the difference with Jarek, though, is he was, like, on the same point with with uh, Han, you know? Like, they were kind of the same mind. Like, they were both smugglers. Han's a goody tissues. Sorry, I mean, uh, Han, <laughs> no. Luke is a goody tissues. And so I think Han gets annoyed by that. But I also think he still feels that, like, sort of connection to Luke that, um, uh, that he had with Jarek. That's, like, the only, like, thing I really analyzed from that. Other than that, it's just, they're doing stuff for the Rebels. Han doesn't know if he wants to be there. It's the same sort of thing with Episode 4 and 5. Um, you know, I don't know if I want to be here. You know, should I be looking out for myself? But, like, Luke and Leia are my friends, so I'm going to stick around for now. And it's kind of like his only little conflict. I mean, he's still with them by the end, but... Uh, the more interesting parts are are Mara Jade, but even with that, there were parts I was like, like I don't know, like it's very mixed. So the, there are parts with Mara Jade where I'm legitimately like, this is awesome. Now I've heard some people argue that she's the best character in Star Wars, and she's not even in the actual movies. This book did not sell me on that, but I'm willing to bet the Thrawn trilogy might, because she was really cool and I really liked her, in this book. However, she's not anywhere near one of my favorite characters, not yet. But I'm also reading these in chronological order. So someone who already read the Thrawn trilogy and all the other stuff with her and then read this might appreciate her more than I do because this is my first time seeing her. And as introductions go, what I will give, she's really good at combat. She's really smart and she's really cool. What I love is that if, it, if this was Disney, she'd be secretly stronger than vader somehow and that's just that and we just never heard about her but no she's clearly not stronger than vader she's strong in the force for sure she's powerful but um, she's no vader and she knows it it's actually kind of that was one of the best so like the first time we really get introduced with mara she's talking to the emperor to palpatine that everything about that i was in 110 percent um, then she goes to, like, this library, and she talks to Vader. <laughs> that, I mean, it was such a little scene, but it was good. He clearly doesn't like her. I mean, who? What does? what does Vader have except him? Except now he doesn't. Because in this book... Now, I know they made a comic book in the Disney canon where Boba Fett gives him the name Skywalker. Um, so that's how... Uh, Vader finds out, which is, it was an okay book, but if you want to be like, I want to mix canons, you can't, because that completely contradicts this book, um, you see, because, 
Mara Jade is talking to him. He gets off the computer and, and he's talking to her for a bit. She goes and looks at what he was looking at and she does whatever and finds that he found the name Luke Skywalker. And then later on in the book, when when she thinks, or she's trying to go after this one person. I don't want to spoil it in case you read it. But Vader thinks she's talking about Leia and then gets super upset and then tries to fight her for a bit until he calms down. But yeah, so I don't know, there's a lot of like the way I would the way it is is Vader's kind of like the public figure. He's like the the brute force the guy, you know, that you bring in to do all the heavy action. Uh, Mara Jade is more of um the assassin. She goes in silently or tries to and does things like that. Though she can fight if she needs to. She's super good at it. But she's like the assassin, right? She's more of like flexible and stuff. And can like do the flips and tricks and all that stuff. That's her thing. Also, it says magenta. All the art that I've seen from Mara Jade, her lightsaber is purple. And in this book, she says she doesn't know where the Emperor got the crystal for her. Uh, there was a way it was explained in the book, but it sounds like what it's saying is that the lightsaber, uh, to me, my impression was that it was the lightsaber of Mace Windu that Palpatine kept and gave her the light, the cyber, the kyber crystal, and made that be her crystal, uh, purple. I don't know. But that would be kind of cool. Um, and then the best part of this book. Because honestly, Marjade is 50-50. There are parts that I was like super in it. And then parts I was like... <sighs> and everything with Han and, uh, and Luke, I was like either... Okay, okay. I was like... <sighs> and then Ben's also talking to Luke. Like through the force or whatever. And that's cool. But like, I don't know. It just... I just wasn't feeling it. But the best part of this book, overall, is that there are these five stormtroopers. Um, they massacre people at this place. Uh, seemingly innocent. Seemingly just civilians. They're supposedly rebels, but they don't know. And, you know, I thought I saw where the plot was going. I thought they were going to go join the rebellion by the end, but they don't. They still are loyal to the em Empire. Except that they're not part of the Empire. So, like, the ISB, which is a whole thing, if you can Google what Star Wars ISB is, it's uh, it's part of the Imperial stuff. It's like kind of like their, I don't want to misrepresent this, kind of like their CIA within the Empire. I don't know. It's something like that. Um, but this officer starts yelling at one of them and instinctively, because he's like pointing a gun at them, and he instinctively shoots him down. So they have to go on the run. Um, but they don't want to join the rebellion, um, but they still want to be loyal to the Empire, even though the Empire is going to hate them now because they did that. So they start doing, like, good acts and good deeds. They they become kind of like this... I'll, I'll steal from Matt Wilkins. They become, like, the A-Team. They, like, they have their own, like, little A-Team thing going on. And all of them as characters was really interesting. And it was... Nice to see Stormtroopers as good guys. Now, I know that we have that in The Force Awakens, but don't worry, we will get to that because... For the longest time, I don't like the sequel movies, but that was the one thing I praised. I said, what an original idea. And then they squandered it. But I finally learned, not only did they squander it, but it's not even an original idea. It's in the EU. But we'll get to that when we get to that. Kyle Katarn. <sighs> but anyway, overall, that was the Best part of the book. Every time they were on, it was good. They were the best part of the book. Best contribution, best everything. Uh, the rest of it was kind of boring. And I have to say, I don't want to be negative because this is the EU. This is my happy time with Star Wars, away from the sequel. So don't get me wrong. This may be a mixed bag, but this is still a million times better than the sequel trilogy or anything that Disney's produced. And I would take this over Disney stuff any day. And again, if I sound negative... If you love Disney Star Wars and you like it, great. All the power to you. I'm not saying you are a bad person for liking Disney, but I don't like it. 
I don't have to like it, and I don't have to think of it as canon. And there are some things that are objectively bad about it. Just like there are some things that are objectively bad about the prequels. But I think they do worse stuff in the sequels. But if you like it, great. And all the power to you. You enjoy what you enjoy. I don't want to take any joy away from you. Especially during this whole quarantine. You know? If you got stuff that can keep your mind off of all this nonsense. And you can go and go to a galaxy far, far away. Who am I to say no to you? Enjoy it. But this is what I'm going to enjoy. And even as a mixed bag, it still took me away from reality for a bit. But I, I'm going to have to say, I would say skip. Now here's the thing. Choices 1 is next. And it's pretty much following from this book. So I might like Choices 1 more. And if that's the case, and you decide that you want to check them out, you're, you should probably just buy them together. You should buy Allegiance, Choices of 1. But if you don't have any interest in Choices of 1, then don't get this one either. I really think this one's skippable. You don't need it. Though, I already paid for it, so anytime I go through the EU, I will read this again. Because, well, I paid for it. I'm going to get my money's worth. So, um, But if you haven't wasted your money, um, maybe check out a review for Choices of 1. See if it's something that might interest you. I mean, of course, I'll do a review for you once I've finished it. And if it's if choices of one seems like something you might want to get, then you need to get allegiance because it's kind of kind of hand in hand. Um, but if you don't, then you just skip it. Just go for it. skip it. But that's all I gotta say. Um, I look forward to the more interesting stuff with um, Timothy Zahn with his uh, Thrawn trilogy and whatnot. I do know chronologic actually it's not the first time there's actually a book called outbound flight which i don't have um which takes place during uh the prequel area that has thrawn in it but for the first time i'm gonna see thrawn not counting rebels because that's disney canon and we're not talking about that or any of the books associated with that we're talking about thrawn for the eu i'm gonna see him for the first time in the next book and captain pelican because um Apparently, they're in the next book. I don't know how significant of a role they have. Probably very minor, but they are going to be in it. So that's going to be interesting. But, yeah. Hope you all enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, come subscribe. Come join me on this journey through the EU. Um, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. I'm going to be reviewing some of the video games, but not on gameplay. I'm not, that's not what I'm doing. I'm only going to do it on the story parts. So, because they are very important to the EU. As I mentioned, Kyle Katarn, he has a couple video games. And he's kind of super important in the books later. Like, I checked him up. Like, I looked at, like, what he's been in. And he's in books that I have. So, he's a very important character. So, I'll, I'll get to that when I get to that. But overall, it was, um, it was definitely interesting. It was good to see Mara Jade for the first time. Because I know she's going to be... A, integral character for quite a bit so that's gonna be cool to see but for now i'll see you in the next one long live the eu the superior galaxy far far